What is going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be looking at why tar amps is one of the best bang for the buck amps out there and why, unfortunately, uh, this is my third MD-12K I've had to get from them, so stay tuned. But we lit up blue, I thought, oh perfect, we are good to go. And then it was just pop, 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 bang! And there were several sparks and a little bit of smoke pop. Alright guys, so of course we have the uh, tar amps MD-12K right here. This is going to be my video reviewing it, going over its pros and its cons, and then of course showing a few clips of it uh, playing. So let's get right into that. Now of course these are bazillion made amps. So right in here, very bare bones. You just really just get the, uh, the amp. You get a big car amp decal. And you get the instructions manual. Uh, to start out with, of course, it goes over all the features you have on the amp. Of course, we have inputs, that's high and low pass crossovers, bass boost, we have bass boost frequency, and then we have the 1 ohm version. So it does 12,000 watts at 1 ohms, 7,200 watts at 2 ohms, and they don't even give a rating at um, 4 ohms, but it's probably around 4,000 or something like that. So let's get right into this. So here is the amp, nothing too out of the ordinary here. Now what is really, really great about these amps besides the price is the size. Now of course this amp does put out 12,000 watts at 1 ohm, that is an RMS power, not a max power rating. Now I have not seen an actual dyno of this amp, there may be one out there, I'm not sure, but I do know that the uh, smaller ones that have been dynoed do put out their rated power no problem, so I would imagine this one does too, but again, What's really cool about this is for a 12,000 watt amp, which normally would be a huge amp, this thing is under 22 inches wide and about 9 inches tall and only about 2 and 3 quarters inches deep. So you're fitting a ton of power into a very small blueprint, which is awesome. Most other 12K amps, at least your you know more traditional styled amps, are just going to be massive, whereas if you're a little tight on room, this is really a great option to go with. Okay, so on this side, we of course have our inputs. This is one of the things I really do not like about this amp. These are not Tiffany style connectors, and they actually feel kinda loose when you're plugging in your RCA's and unplugging them. You gotta be super careful. I do feel like they could get broken off if you're not careful. But over here, we have our level. This is of course your gain. And again, the knobs are super wiggly and just very cheap feeling. So just something to note. We then have our crossovers. We have high pass and low pass filter. Your high pass goes from a 10 to 90 hertz. And then your low pass goes from 90 to 5,000 hertz. So this is a full range amp. Now it wouldn't be good for your, your uh, tweeters or whatnot, but for your subwoofers, mid range speakers or anything like that, uh, this amp would work great. And then we do have bass boost. Now what's nice about this, we have the frequency and the bass boost. You never really want to use just your bass boost, so even on this amp I keep it off. But if for some reason there was a certain uh, frequency between uh, 35 and 55 hertz that you wanted to boost, you could turn it to that and then just boost uh, that frequency with this amp. And then we have our outputs. I do believe you could fit 4 gauge wire into those pretty easily. So really, really cool there. Uh, we do have fans over here on either side and you'll hear it, these things are quite noisy. And then we have fans on this side too, so it has at least four fans in it. When we open up my other amp, we'll see if there's what else is inside. And then we do have dual inputs over here, and these are uh, two-aught in inputs. It says definitely do not use any less than that. I actually have dual inputs that go into each of these, and of course I'll show you all that here in a minute as well. So here is the setup I am working with. This is my previous Tariums 12K, which died on me, and I'm gonna go over why here in a sec, and to go over why I'm actually, this was actually the, my second amp from them, so I am on my third. Again, we're gonna go on that just here in a sec. We have 128 amp hours of headway lithium cells, so it gives this thing plenty of juice. It's very rare I even drop uh, into the 12 volt range, 
and that's still with a stock alt once i get my upgraded alt which will be charging at a higher voltage i doubt we'll ever get into 12 volts with this thing and of course i have all my dual inputs all hooked up so we can give this thing plenty of power guys it sounds like it's about to storm out so before it does that i'm going to get this amp uh swapped out and then i'm going to go over kind of why i'm uh having to swap this out and why i'm on my third amp but yeah let's go ahead and get this thing swapped out here real quick so we can be back in business All right, guys, got the car on. Of course, the uh, base knob is not on yet, so the amp is not on. We are gonna turn that on and see if we are in business. Of course, got this all the way down. And we are in business, guys. The amp is back. been a week without bass so this is really really exciting guys so happy to have this uh done and put back in there so yeah let's uh, kind of get over why i'm on my third amp now real quick guys everybody always asks how i have these uh set now i have my bass boost and bass frequency all the way off we are not dealing with that and then for the particular way i have my pre-out set up i have the uh, level on this which is of course the gain set at about half and then for the high pass filter, I have it just a little bit above 10. It should be around kind of 15 to 17 or so. And then for the low pass filter, which goes from 90 hertz to uh, 5K, I have that just all the way off because we're not going to be playing anything really above 90 hertz on this system. With that being said, guys, one issue with this, I don't think this is going to pick it up. Let me shed some light on it. So these buttons are literally so cheap. Even though the low pass filter looks like it's partly on, it is actually all the way off. It's just the little line is not lined up correctly with where uh, it actually is. See if I can kind of show that. See, we're all the way up. I can turn it up, but I have it all the way back there. Again, guys, if you're getting one of these, don't expect a great quality built product because this isn't. You know, if you're wanting some really good budget uh, base, then these are great. But again, not top quality whatsoever. So let's get over why I just installed my third one of these tar amps in the 12Ks. First reason being is that the box that these are shipped in, there is zero protection in this box. Every other sub I've ever got has been, there's been some sort of foam thing or something protecting it inside the actual manufacturer, you know, box that it comes in. Of course, this has none of that. So the issue with that is the first amp I bought, I bought it around Christmas time. Um, it came in this box and then there was another really thin box around it that had just a bubble wrap on one side so when I came the amp was damaged it had been dropped and these things are pretty cheap so this whole plastic part had got busted off and the uh, whole metal part down here was all bent in and yeah it was a mess so I had to send that back they then sent me another one and it was totally packaged fine so that was no big deal so yeah the one you've all seen me been running in the past that was actually my second and then, of course, I just put in my third amp, and that really was mainly my problem. I had the car on, and I unplugged the uh, two leads from, a, from my speaker box, because I was going to plug them into another one while the car was on. I wasn't playing music or anything, but the car was on. And anyway, the two leads uh, shorted, 
and that popped my amp. It went into protection mode, which is what it's supposed to do. This is supposed to have protection for multiple things, including that. So anyway, it went into protection mode. I said, oh, okay, well, no big deal. So I turned the car off for a few minutes, turned it back on, uh, the amp went into protection. So the amp always starts with protection, and then it goes into ready, and then it turns on. So it lit up blue. I thought, oh, perfect, we are good to go. And then it was just pop, 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 bang. And there was several uh, sparks and a little bit of smoke, and then it went right back into protection. So at that point, I realized the built-in protection for shorting in this amp was no bueno. So really bummed about that again. Totally my fault for uh, letting those leaves touch and that happening. But on the other point, it is supposed to protect for that, guys. So if you do get any uh, Tar Amps products, make sure to be ultra, ultra careful, guys. Always have your car off so the amp is off when you're doing anything. And always make sure never to short out any wires uh, when you're dealing with one of these amps. Now, in the future, I may go to a uh, higher quality amp where I don't have to worry about anything like that. But for at the point where I'm at right now, uh, these are just such a good deal. I was able to get this third one for 680 bucks, and I got it here within under a week, so that was awesome. Now, if you go online, most of these places are charging like $788 at the moment, but even then, it's still a great deal, guys. And the other one I had, again, it lasted me since about Christmas, and it's now well into May, so it lasted me almost half a year, and if I hadn't have uh, made that error, it would still be going no problem, guys. So anyway, yeah, guys, Make sure, if you get one of these, just to be ultra, ultra careful. Now, this is going to totally void my warranty, but for y'all, it is worth it. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, back off so we can just kind of look in there and see what went wrong with this amp. Let's get a little closer look about this. First off, right there, you can see we had some failing points. Then also right in here, there's a couple of little little splotches in there that don't look quite so hot. Again, I'm sure some of y'all probably know a lot more about this than me. I honestly don't really know all that much at all about the uh, inner workings of amps. But yeah, that's the main area that I noticed. But let's go ahead and get a look at this thing, just so you can see the inside. We've got two little fans over here, and then two bigger fans over here. You can see all the caps and just everything else we got going on in here. Again, as you can see, guys, these things are just thrown together to keep the cost down as much as possible. Oh, yeah. As I was talking about those knobs, I mean, super cheap, guys. If you were to drop this, you'd break that off no problem. So you can pull... Uh, anyway, super, super cheap. And then here are the... RCA inputs. Again, you can wiggle them and just really, really cheap. Again, though, you're getting an insane amount of power in an insanely small area. So you can't really com complain. If they jacked the quality up on these, they would have to increase the prices significantly. Well, guys, my overall opinion of the Tar Amps MD Series amps, specifically this 12K, is that they put out a ton of power. They're really awesome amps. You really cannot beat tar amps on a dollar per wattage value, and they do do rated power in every test that I've seen. I know at 2 ohms, I've had, had this thing well up into the 6,000 watt mark. So yeah, guys, these things, again, um, dollar per watt, these things are incredible. You're not gonna beat it. Now that being said, they are cheap. The fans are really, really noisy, so you have gotta be ready for that as well. So again, if you're just wanting power, this thing is great. If you're wanting a quality amp that looks good, that just feels good, and that's going to last you for forever, probably not the amp to go with. Anyway, guys, I appreciate y'all so much for checking this out. Let me know what y'all think. Would y'all pick up a tar amps, or would you want to go with something that you know is going to be really good quality, is going to have the protection that you need in case you do make a simple mistake, and that's just going to last you a really long time and have more of a premium feel. You all let me know in the comments, guys. Anyway, stay tuned for more videos and more reviews coming soon.